kick ass facts. Pew, 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 pew. We're gonna unlock a new fear for you right here. So when I say content warning, heed my words. A live eight centimeter long, three inch worm was removed from the brain of a 64 year old Australian woman. The neurosurgeon was operating on the woman's skull when she discovered the parasite still alive, thought to be a world first. The surgeon said, I just thought, what is that? It doesn't make any sense, but it's alive and moving. She ended up plucking the worm out with forceps. It continued to move with vigor, she said. We all felt a bit sick. You're not the only one. It was the larva of an Australian native species not previously known to be a human parasite. Doctor said the woman's symptoms first started in January, 2021 when she first developed abdominal pain and diarrhea, followed by fever, cough, and shortness of breath. The patient was first admitted to a local hospital in late January, 2021, after suffering three weeks with abdominal pain and diarrhea, three weeks, followed by a constant dry cough, fever, and night sweats. They said these symptoms were likely due to the migration of roundworm larvae from the bowel and into other organs, such as the liver and lungs. Fuck sake. When respiratory samples and a lung biopsy were performed, no parasites were identified in the tissue specimens. By 2022, doctors said the patient was experiencing forgetfulness and depression. I'd be depressed too. Prompting an MRI scan that showed an atypical tissue injury within the right frontal lobe of the brain. Another doctor said, this patient has been treated for what was a mystery illness that we ultimately thought was an immunological condition because we hadn't been able to find a parasite before. And then out of nowhere, this big lump appeared in the frontal part of her brain. Six months after the worm was removed, the patient's neuropsychiatric symptoms improved but persisted. This worm is commonly found in carpet pythons. Its larvae are usually found in small mammals and marsupials, which are then eaten by the python, allowing the life cycle to complete itself in the snake. Researchers said the worm typically lives in a python's esophagus and stomach and sheds its eggs in the host feces. Humans would be considered accidental hosts. In this new study, researchers said the woman used warrigal greens for cooking and was likely infected with a parasite from touching the native grass or after eating the greens. Wash everything that goes into your face. Let's lighten it up a little bit. So I recently joined a radiology subreddit because I'm fascinated by that kind of stuff. And I saw an x-ray of a fe Let me paint the picture for you since posting it will likely get the video taken down. It was an x-ray of a broken femur and the gentleman's dingling was pointing to the broken femur. I look in the comments and everyone's talking about a Throckmorton. That's a nice Throckmorton. Oh, look at that Throckmorton. So I Googled. It was known as the Throckmorton sign or the John Thomas sign, which is a slang term used by medical students and residents. It refers to when the dingling points in the direction of unilateral disease, typically of the pelvis or hip. In 1993, the band Soul Asylum released a song called Runaway Train. The video cut back and forth between the band, scenes which would be a parent's worst nightmare, a guy with candy trying to lure your kid into a van, a woman scooping a baby out of a stroller, and the photos and names of missing kids provided by the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. In total, 36 American kids were shown in the American version of the video. They were replaced for British and Australian audiences. On August 10th, 1993, a 16-year-old girl who had run away from home in 1991 saw the video on MTV, called her mom, and went back home. Five other kids re-established contact after seeing the videos, so people thought the video worked. Well, 11 kids from the US videos are still missing. Four were ruled dead. That leaves 21 found. This year is the 30th anniversary of the song and Slate.com tried to track down all 21 of those kids. Now in, kids, now they're in their 40s. All were determined runaways and none of them say they were saved by the video. Joyce Collier, now 47, said, when I see it, I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, what the hell? In my case, I guess I didn't want to be found until I was ready to be found. Guitarist Dan Murphy said a girl walked up to the band at a meet and greet and asked, why are you fuckers trying to ruin my life? A lot of these kids were running away from terrible home situations and abuse, and they were kind of forced to go back home. Ironically, the song wasn't even about runaway kids.